Hi everyone! So, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be unboxing the um, brushes that I got in Hakuhodo when I went to their flagship store in Kyoto recently. And, um, well, on this part of the video, I'm not going to show you guys, like, you know, how I'm going to use it, but I'm going to present this to you guys first because I actually want to wash the brushes before I actually use them. So, since it's very nice, bright, and sunny today, if I wash this today, um, it's going to dry <laughs> fast because the air um, is not heavy with water. But anyway, so let's unbox this together. I actually wanted to um, take some videos when I was at the Hakuhodo store, like, you know, just to show you guys. But um, when I asked permission if it was okay to take videos, um, it wasn't allowed, but I was actually allowed to take one photo. Um, well, no, I think you're, like, in general allowed to take photos, but um, I didn't really want to, like, you know, take a bunch of photos because um, like, I, I, I was actually able to take a video um, when I went there. Um, back in 2018 but i guess their uh, rules have changed but that's actually okay so um anyway so what i got here are actually like you know i just got a few um brushes and it's actually a lot of uh, yachio brushes as you guys can see here from the packaging i don't know if you have watched me talk about my most favorite brushes ever and some of them are like, you know, the Yachio brushes from Hakuhodo. So when I went there, I actually purchased, um, like, you know, the sizes that I lacked in my collection. And I also got another um, brush here, which is called the Mizobake. So let me open this first so that I can just show you guys this. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. Okay, so um, you do not see the Kumano Fude seal in the packaging for Hakuhodo. So... I mean, which is okay, maybe they're not part of the Kumano Fude Association, maybe that's why, I'm not too sure. So, the Mizubake comes in a very nice, like, you know, plastic round packaging like this, if only I can get it. And there you go, so it's in a very secure packaging. And let me just pull it out of the packaging, and of course, you have the purple string here which is very like you know um, it's a trademark of Hakuhodo and this is the brush head of the Mizobake so um, it's not really flat flat you know a flat top kind of a brush but there's a little bit of a like a like a dome shape to it and um, it's very airy and it's actually very very soft and look at that and um, I don't know how I'm gonna use this yet but if I'm going to follow what I saw in the film Memoirs of a Geisha maybe that's what I'm gonna do wherein I apply foundation and I use this to blend it out it's so pretty look how it gleams under natural light now the crazy thing about this is that I actually forgot to ask the sales associate what kind of uh, goat hair brushes are used for um, the Yachio brushes so um, maybe when I go back during brush festival um, I can ask them that question all right so the next brush that I have here that I'm just removing from the packaging is a small tapered Yachio brush so this is the smallest size of their tapered Yachio brush it's still very very pretty look at that and it's so cute it's so small it's almost the size of my finger let me show you guys that sorry there's a glare in the sun there and it's very like you know there's some strength in it just by touching it right now there's some strength and resilience and there's also a very nice fullness here in the belly and of course this is tapered so you can use this maybe to apply like you know um, powder or concealer foundations whatever or be more precise with highlighters things like that okay so that's the small tapered yachio brush now the other brush that i got here ooh, i should have also taken out my scissors before i sat down here in front of my office um okay so let me just slide it out so this is also a small version of the regular design yachio brush so it's not um well i don't know if this is going to bloom after i have washed it so that's why i wanted to wash it and um, just to put the tapered, the small tapered brush side by side, they have the same length, but the brush head designs are very different. This one almost looks quite flat, but there's still like a little arch here on the top, so it's not like the regular kabuki type of brushes. And then again, it's very small, so you can use this for like, you know, spot application of color or whatever. So 
That's the two smallest Kichiyo brushes from the Hakodo collection. And the other brush that I got, this is the last brush that I purchased in Hakuhodo. So I didn't go to town when I went to Hakuhodo because I was actually saving my money because um, I don't have a regular gig yet. So maybe hopefully when I get a regular gig in the network, I can buy more brushes. So this one is the medium sized Yachio brush. So this is the regular um, brush design because um, the other brushes that they have are also tapered. So um, this one is um, very beautiful and very lovely and it still has this very nice like you know dome shape here. Like you know at the tip of the bristles it has some kind of resilience to it but it's still very very soft. For sure I know that this will bloom after I have washed it. So let me just go get my other Yachio brushes so that I can show you guys in comparison while I am doing this. By the way before I continue let me say that all traditional brushes from Hakuhodo will come with a purple string. Now there will be a few exceptions but this will always be the case. Now the Mizobake and all of the Yachio brushes has a wooden handle wrapped in cane and the wooden handle is usually colored in red as you guys can see here and in other brands they sometimes use plastic handles for this. Now the Mizubake and the Yachiyo brushes here have a full head of goat hair fibers. Okay so this is my large Yachiyo brush from Hakuhodo and then this is the medium regular sized Yachio brush from Hakuhodo and this is the small Yachio brush uh, from the regular like you know brush head design of Hakuhodo and then this is the large tapered Yachio brush this is the medium tapered Yachio brush and this is how the small tapered Yachio brush looks like so um, in putting these side by side we can see that eventually the new brushes will actually bloom. So that's why, um, as I said earlier, I wanted to wash these brushes first, the new ones that I got, so that um, they are going to bloom into their actual shape. All right, so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to wash them first, and as soon as they're dry, let's continue with the demo. All right, Ooh, let me get the other one. Oh. Here, here's the other one. Okay, so I'm going to go wash these now. I'll see you in a bit. So all of the brushes are now dry and as you guys can see, um, the brush heads have now bloomed like, you know, to its um, actual width and the Mizubaki here, as you can see from the top, has a very nice rounded brush head shape which I like and it blooms quite nicely, I do have to say. And um, after I've seen this, like, you know, hanging in the drying rack, um, it reminded me a lot of the Sonia G um, Smooth Buffer and the Buffer Pro brush. So if you guys can see here, like, you know, just side by side, um, although the Smooth Buffer and the Buffer Pro, they have, um, the bristles haven't bloomed widely because I keep this in a brush guard. So if I didn't keep these at the brush guard, it would have, like, you know, bloomed wider. But, you know, just for some comparison, so let's gonna, let's put the Mizubake beside the Buffer Pro from Sonya G, as you guys can see. And this is from the top, so we can see how wide it is. And we can also see the difference. So I can say that the Mizubake is actually much more, like, you know, airier and fluffier in comparison to that of the Buffer Pro from Sonya G. The Buffer Pro from Sonya G is a very dense brush head and it's also like more resilient. If I just press it here at the palm, we can see the strength of its core and the way that it just jumps back into its original position. 
And the means of Bakke in comparison, if I just like, you know, tap it here on the palm of my hand, we can see how wide it plays out. So it's actually a very, very soft brush head. And for the smooth buffer, it's softer than the Buffer Pro, of course. It's smaller, but it's also denser. And it's not as airy as the Miso bucket brush. So if we just put them side by side, we can see, you know, just for comparison. And they both have the same rounded brush head shape, especially from the top portion. Now, as I've also said, um, earlier in the video that um, although it looks like it's a typical kabuki flat top brush it's not so there's a little bit of a dome here at the very tips of the bristles of the brush head so this is the mizu bucket brush now as for the other yachio brushes they have also bloomed quite nicely so this is the medium yachio round look at that very nice brush head shape i love it now this is the small round yachio brush so it's the same so I'm just gonna put these two side by side so you can see that and then this is the small and tapered Yachio brush we still have that you know very nice rounded brush head shape but again if you look at it from the side we can see that it's quite tapered now as I've been like you know touching the brush heads here before doing this video I can say that um, especially the round Yachio brushes the medium and the small they're quite resilient so they have some strength in their belly so which is actually great now although um, on the Hakuhodo website um, it's stated there that you can use these Yachio brushes for powder only um, knowing me I would end up using them for liquids and creams because um, that's just how I envisioned them in my head so that's how I would like use it actually now of course let me just pull out the large round Yachio brush so of course this is a much more older brush so we can see that the brush head here has now like you know changed color it's more muted now it's more yellow but the brush head here is still very very soft but it's actually airier than the two other um, Yachio brushes that I got so this the medium one is still quite airy but we can see that there's a uh, there's some resiliency in the spring back so when you just like you know run your fingers to the brush head you can see that um there's a little bit of some stiffness quote unquote um in the brush head but i have to say it's still very very soft it doesn't feel prickly at all on the skin and that also stands the same for the small round yachio brush so as you guys can see there's a quite a snap back on the brush head here now in comparison to that of the like you know large round Yachio brush. Now as for the small tapered, it's also the same. I can really feel some resistance and resiliency in the brush head. So in comparison to the this is the medium tapered brush. Look at that. And now this is the large tapered Yachio brush. So um, in just doing this activity alone, like if you have hard pressed like you know powders, maybe highlighting powders you can use this or maybe like knowing me i will use this for liquid highlights all right so now i'm going to be playing around with these brushes so i'm going to try to use all of these and try to see if how i can apply them to my makeup sentiments and to my makeup routine um the mizu bucket by the way as the name implies mizu means water so this can be used for like you know creams and liquids and powders but it's really up to you um, I don't think I'm going to use this for quite like, you know heavy creams because um, I'm not too sure yet if this has the like you know the power to actually blend out heavy creams because after all like if you look at the way like you know traditional Japanese like you know kabuki actors and geishas apply um, like you know their white makeup it's a very liquidy type of a makeup and I have seen in a few videos before that they would like you know apply like the white makeup uh, with a different kind of brush and then they'll get something like this and they use it to spread it out and just to buff it out and I've also seen a few videos wherein they use this to set with powder may it be colored or white so um, again in seeing that it just gives you an idea on how you can well on how I can adapt it to the way that I um, apply makeup on the face Alright, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get my Itabaki brush and this is what I'm going to use to apply um, my foundation first. I'm going to do one side first and I'm using the Lisa Eldridge um, Seamless Skin the Foundation in number 16 and I'm just going to 
spread it all over. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a different brush. Let me use the Jumbo Base brush first from Sonia G. And I'm just going to use this to spread the foundation all over my skin because I want to use the Mizubake first for powder. All right, so I'm quite happy with how the foundation blended into my skin. So I'm going to get some loose setting powder. This is the translucent powder from Laura Mercier. And I'm just picking up some of the powder here that I place at the back of the cap and ooh, it's actually picking up quite a substantial amount of powder let me just tap off the excess okay and let me just press it and I do have to say that by just like you know pressing the brush and tapping it on my skin it actually feels very very soft so I think this is a quite a high grade of goat hair that is used because I have some Michio brushes here in my collection that I know uses a much more lower grade of goat hair and they actually hurt and they feel very very stiff but with this one it's not. Alright so I can actually see that um, it actually applies a very nice amount of powder on the skin very well balanced and I don't see any patchiness at all so before we continue let me just get the small um, Yachio brush and I'm just going to pick up some powder here and I'm just gonna run it here in my under eye area to set whatever foundation is left there and I do have to say it's also doing the job extremely well and Again, um, if you're like me who likes using small brushes for targeted um, application of product, this is a nice brush to use and it actually feels very comfortable in the under eye area. It doesn't hurt at all. And of course, because it's smaller, it will pick up more product and it will also deliver more product into the skin. But I do have to say though, it's a very well balanced application of powder all over. So I'm mighty glad for that okay so let me continue now with this part of my face so I'm just gonna apply a generous amount of foundation I'm not being very careful with it I'm just being very generous with it okay so I have a nice layer of foundation on this part of my skin now and I'm just buffing the powder away from the brush head of the mizubake and I'm gonna use this you know, maybe in circular motions just to see if it can buff out the liquid foundation because I have noticed with the Itabake if you apply a very generous amount of foundation there's some streaking going on so it doesn't really give out a smooth application and let's try to see if the Mizubake can actually help to smoothen that and get rid of like you know the brush marks that you would see typically on the face Okay, I'm just layering the foundation. Alright, so I'm quite happy to say that the Miso Bake actually did smooth out the foundation on my skin. And I really love that because um, it just gives us um, like, you know, an idea of how useful this brush can be. And like, you know, especially if you just want to have a nice thinned out layer of foundation, this is a nice brush to actually use. I love it. It didn't create any streaking at all. Very, very nice. I like the way that it actually created this very nice, like, you know, radiant canvas on my face. I love it. Very pretty. All right, so let me go back to the small Yachio brush. And let me just apply more product here in the under eye area. I'm just tapping it, building coverage as needed. Okay, and let's blend it out with a Mizu bucket. Beautiful, perfect. That's quite nice. I love that. Very nice, very pretty. Okay, so um, before I continue, I would like to use um, some liquid blush. So I have here my liquid blush in Dolce Vita and I'm gonna use the Mizubake for this and I'm just really like you know blending out the product here at the back of my hand and I love the way it's blending out the color now and let me try to see on how well 
this would apply the color of the liquid blush onto my cheek. Ooh, it's actually quite diffused. I love it. And it's actually not disturbing the foundation that we used earlier. I love how diffused it looks on my skin. Let me try it here on the other side. I know there's a layer of powder, but this is also a nice way of checking if it will blend out the product without clinging into like you know the existing product that you have on your face. Oh, it's actually doing a very nice job, I do have to say. Wow. Okay, I wasn't expecting the Mizubaki to do this. But I do love that um, it's actually creating a very nice smooth and diffused color application on the cheeks. And after all, this is the color Dolce Vita from NAR, so it's quite a vibrant color. So if you want a much more like you know very diffused color application of blush on the cheeks, this is a nice brush to actually use. Oh, love it. Look at that. That's very, very pretty. Oh, wow. I am very surprised with this brush. <laughs> All right, so I actually had the idea of using the Mizu Bucket to like, you know, apply um, those hard pressed powders like the MAC Studio Fix, but uh, maybe I'm going to do that in a um, future video because I already have color here on the brush head. So it might like, you know, cause like, you know, product buildup on the brush. And I don't know if that's going to create a nice look for us today. But um, at least we have something to try out again in the future. All right, so let me just set some parts of my face with some powder using the small round Yachio brush. Oh, and by the way, um, if you guys are wondering on how small the brush head is of the Yachio brush, um, if you have the um, soft face brush from the a mini Kiyaki set of Sonia G. It almost um, has the same brush head length, but the um, soft face brush from mini Kiyaki, from the from the Sonia G mini Kiyaki has a much more longer um, bristle. But um, the small round Yachio brush actually blooms wider in comparison. And also, if you have the Tensedo WC114, if I got the number correctly, so they're almost the same length and size and shape, but the Yachio brush here, the round one, just blooms wider in comparison of that of the Tensedo WC140 brush. Again, just for comparison, we can see how round um, these brush heads are. Like also the soft face from the mini Kiyaki set, look how rounded they are. But both of these are actually very, very soft. But the soft face from the mini Kiyaki set is actually softer than that of the small round Yachio brush from Hakuhodo. So at least it gives us an idea on the difference of like, you know, the resiliency and the blending ability of this small round Yachio brush. So this is the medium round Yachio brush and the reason why I they you know, decided to get this is because um, I, it would fit very nicely into like these smaller pans from like you know um, hourglass or if you have a lot of like blushes or like you know finishing powders with smaller square or round pans in them um, you actually need to have a smaller brush head for this and I love that this will actually fit quite nicely into the pans and I also know that these brushes, these Yachio brushes are quite resilient and this will actually pick up a very nice amount of product. So I'm just applying a little bit of this finishing powder here in my under eye area and this picking up more as you guys can see here. And they actually do a very nice job of applying and blending out and buffing in product into the skin. Now, if you have very sensitive skin, um, I might not use Yachio brushes because um, after all, um, like, you know, if you have very sensitive skin, even if these Yachio brushes are like, you know, quite soft, I can actually feel some strength in it and some resilience. So that might be an issue for you. And especially if you've been using softer types of like, you know, brushes in your collection, like 
on squirrel brushes, psycho brushes. I think that the Yachio brushes might be a little bit beyond your comfort zone, basing on the fact that I think this is not made of a psycho goat hair fiber. But um, if you've been intrigued by it, maybe get a much more larger Yachio brush because at least it's airier. And even though if they're quite dense, they won't feel as tough, quote unquote, because the bristles are actually longer. So they'll glide in a much more wider sense on the face in comparison to that of smaller um, Yachio brushes. Right, so as you guys can see, it applied a very nice, well-balanced amount of finishing powder on the face. So let me try and use this color here. So this is a blush color, and this is how it picks up um, color. It concentrates um, the pigments right in the middle of the brush head, which is actually great. And then I can just like, you know, use a tapping motion to apply the pigment. And I'm just removing whatever excess is left on the brush head. And I'm just going to blend that out. Very nice, well diffused. We're also going to do that here on the other side. So this is just adding some intensity to the Dolce Vita blush that I applied from NARS earlier. This is very nice and very pretty. It does layer color very nicely and it doesn't actually disturb um, the color that I applied before this actual powder blush. Alright, so now I'm going to use this small tapered Yachio brush and I'm going to be picking up some, maybe this color here from this Pat McGrath palette. This is the only Pat McGrath palette that I have and the reason why is because they're quite expensive and the dollar is now very very strong that I can't really afford to um, buy more. But anyway, so as you guys can see, it's actually applying a very nice diffused amount of like you know this very glittery color on the cheeks. Is actually very very nice and um, that's also one of the reasons why I wanted to get smaller brushes because they will actually fit into like you know palettes like these and there are some colors in this palette that actually like you know will work very well as highlighters or like you know just to add some drama into the cheeks and I really love this palette for that because like you know it has this very nice very glittery and shimmery um, eyeshadow colors that I can use as highlighters and if you have like you know deeper skin tones this would look very nice as a highlighter and this one you can use as a blush things like that so you can always play around with this and I can actually see that it's actually like you know can you guys see that can you I'm not too sure if the camera will actually capture all of the like you know micro glitters that that pigment has actually delivered here on my cheeks and this is actually very effective in applying color in a targeted area here on the cheek and you might also want to use that here on the brow bone and if we're feeling a little bit like you know um, adventurous today let's pick up this color here and maybe we can just like you know use it to apply like a one and done all over eyeshadow on the eyes and yeah you can Let's also do that here on the other side. So of course, I'm not being like, you know, very careful. I'm just being very generous with it. And we can actually see that it did apply a very nice wash of color on the eye. So that's actually very, very pretty. I actually wasn't expecting that. And at least if you're also, you know, wanting to be quite artistic with your, like, you know, makeup application, I think you can also use this, like, you know, if you just want to blend out color into the cheeks, you know, from the eyes into the cheeks, this would be perfect. The size of it is actually perfect. Ah, that was nice. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. So that's one thing that I love doing when I'm playing around with new brushes or makeup. Sometimes you get results that you weren't expecting to get. All right, this is it. I think this is my vlog for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed me showing you my latest addition into my Fuda collection, the smaller size Yachio brushes and also the Mizubake brush. So I have been very intrigued by these brushes for quite a long time. And as I've said in a vlog before, um, I actually wanted to see these brushes in person first before actually purchasing them. So I'm actually quite glad that I, like, you know, when I saw them at the Hakuhodo flagship store in Kyoto, I, I said to myself, yeah, I needed 
these brushes um, especially the smaller ones because you know with me um, I like applying makeup in specific areas of the of the face and not necessarily like you know in one full go of like you know makeup application it's always nice to apply makeup in a targeted area anyway and of course the mizobake i have been very intrigued by this and i'm so happy on the way it actually worked with me today very very pretty very very nice and um if you are actually quite intrigued about my Yachio brush collection. I'm going to put a link down in the description box to that blog so that you can see me talk about it. And if you have any more questions about all of the products that I use today, all of the brushes that I use today, please leave them down at the comments box and let's have a conversation about it. All right, I'm going to let you go now. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here and I hope that you're having a good day wherever you are. Bye!